Hi there and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers superpower relations and the Cold War 1941 to 1991 from the GCSE Ed Excel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other examples or if, like me, you just love history. You can now become a member to support me to continue to make this content. You'll get exclusive access to worksheets, revision materials and you'll get to vote on forthcoming episodes. Just click on the join button below this video. Hey guys, last time we were looking at the expansion of Soviet influence in Eastern Europe. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Western response to Stalin's expansion, namely the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan, and Stalin's response to those. In February 1947, Britain informed the USA that they could no longer afford to keep troops in Greece and Turkey. This alarmed Truman because he knew that if Britain withdrew, these countries were likely to become communist. Therefore, he decided that the USA would have to get involved in Europe to prevent Stalin from spreading communism. This belief became known as the Truman Doctrine and formed the basis for the next 50 years of politics in Europe and America. Truman gave a speech on the 12th of March 1947 in which he outlined his concerns for Europe. Truman was worried that the effects of World War II would lead to countries becoming communist. Europe was destroyed. There was unemployment, poverty and hopelessness everywhere. Truman was worried that these conditions made the idea of communism more attractive. Additionally, many Eastern European countries had been liberated from Nazi control by the USSR and some, including Poland, had already been forced to take a communist government. Truman was worried that this would spread. This theory was called the domino effect, the idea that when one nation fell to communism, others would follow. In his speech, Truman said that countries faced a choice between capitalism and communism. He said that communism was evil, because the people were not free. Truman believed that the USA should stop the spread of communism. This policy was called containment. So, in April 1948, General George C. Marshall, the US Secretary of State, announced the USA's plan, which was named after him. The plan provided $17 billion in aid to help rebuild Europe. Since communism appealed to those with nothing to lose, the Marshall Plan aimed to give people a stake in their own society. Aid was given to 16 countries, of whom the largest beneficiaries were Britain who received 3.1 billion US dollars and France who received 2.7 billion US dollars. Of those at real risk of becoming a communist country, Greece was the largest beneficiary receiving 376 million US dollars. However, in order to receive the aid, the country must commit to trading with the USA and to a review of the country's finances, something that many of the Eastern European countries were not able to do. The plan was successful in that it supported Greece in defeating the communists and it confirmed the USA's commitment to containing communism, a policy which was to have far-reaching effects. However, it deepened the rivalry between the USA and the USSR and confirmed the split between communist and non-communist Europe. Stalin saw the Marshall Plan as a direct attack on the USSR. He accused Truman of using the plan for his own selfish reasons, to dominate Europe and to boost the US economy. He believed that the USA was using money to gain control over Europe, a policy which Stalin called dollar imperialism. Stalin knew he had to offer a positive alternative to the Marshall Plan and so set up Comicom, the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance and Common Form, the Communist Information Bureau. Common Form was responsible for organizing all the communist parties in Europe. Its main aim was to remove opposition to Soviet control in communist-led countries. It included the communist parties of the satellite states Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland and Romania, plus Yugoslavia, France and Italy. However, Tensions between Tito of Yugoslavia and Stalin caused Yugoslavia to be expelled from common form in 1948. The agreement made sure that the governments in the satellite states took their orders from Moscow and the parties were encouraged to trade with each other rather than non-communist countries. Stalin also took the opportunity at common form meetings to spread anti-US propaganda. Comic-Con strengthened the trade links between the common form countries and aimed to provide financial aid in line with communist principles which would prevent the Soviet-led countries joining the Marshall Plan. At first, the committee spent their time organising credit and trade agreements, but after 1953, it began to organise the economies of member states, giving each a financial five-year plan in favour of trade with Comic-Con. For example, Bulgaria's trade with other Comic-Con countries increased from 10% of its overall trade in the 1930s to over 90% in the 1950s. 
In reality though, the Soviet countries did not have enough money to support one another. The consequences of the two countries' plans were clear. It dramatically increased tension between the two sides because Western Europe was now united, tied to the US by the Marshall Plan and the USA's policy of containment, while the East was also united but under Soviet control. So these spheres of influence drew the battle lines for the Cold War. Okay, that's everything you need to know about the Truman Doctrine, the Marshall Plan, and Comic-Con and Common Form. Don't forget to check out my website for worksheets and revision guidance, and I will see you next time.